I just wanted to take you back uh, sometime and very briefly, can you tell me about that event uh, which brought analytics right front and center within your environment? Certainly I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, last summer we had one day that our tanks were very low. We run on a gravity fed system, so we had people in the, the northwest quadrant of our town that had little pressure to no pressure to no water at all. And of course it was, what's going on? We have a river full of water. We just did a big upgrade to our water plant. How can we not have water for our citizens? And people thought it was something wrong with the water plant. Others thought it was something wrong with the distribution system. I went to water analytics to look at the facts to see what was going on in that northwest quadrant where there was we're experiencing a great rate of growth and i found that people were putting a lot of water on their lawns so it was not an inefficiency or anything with our water plant or with our distribution system it was just a massive amount of usage six thousand some people were putting over six thousand gallons of water on their lawn every day and the sprinklers were kicked in at the same time between four and eight a.m and everybody's did so it's like a concurrency issue. It's like everything happened at the same time, it was create just, a yep. perfect storm and so on. That's correct. So um, yeah, I know when we were talking, we, we then spent a lot of time talking about what that journey led us to. Mm -hmm. But if, if I can use a, a sort of a, a magic fast forward button, you, you know, let's move to where we are now. Okay. And what are some of the projects that you're working on right now that were a direct result in your mind of that event? Well, we are right now working more together, working with our landscaping people, working with our plumbers, and I had called every everybody I knew that installed irrigation systems and asked them to work with us for a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday approach to setting up the new irrigation systems. And we have come together with our plumbers, our landscapers, our distribution system, our water plant, and we're working more as a team now together. And analytics has helped us see that it was not one person's fault, it was not one area's fault. And we are able to show this to our commissioners, you know, critical that the commissioners get the calls and the mayor gets a call and what's going on. And I was able to produce the graphs to show this is what's going on and this is what we're doing. We're working to have Monday, Wednesday, Friday, even numbered homes, water, Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday Thursday, Saturday, the odd numbers, and Sunday we give ourselves to fill our reservoirs. And on a human level, has that information or the ability to have access to that information given you uh, uh, sort of more input to, to get all these different actors together? Because it's mm -hmm. often said that, hey, we need all, everybody to work together, but then there's a lot of inertia in that. You know, everybody's Absolutely. got their own interests. You know, has this actually created uh, some uh, f frictionless, more frictionless environment for that? Absolutely, because we have actually now the plumbers come to us and work more with us. We're working on some literature to, that they can hand out at the plumbing houses or they take to their customers right with them. We are also with our my front office staff, they use the water analytics and we also have the customer portal. So they encourage people to set up the customer portal. They walk, walk through them with their customer portal because they can see exactly what the person is seeing on the other side. So it has kind of brought more trust to the city that we do know what we're talking about and know our meters aren't wrong and the analytics shows them what they're doing and what their usage is. And tell us a little bit about that customer portal because that's another thing where a lot of people always say, oh, we need to get customers engaged and so on. And mm -hmm. you, 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 you try it in a like sort of heavy, <laughs> like you must engage, you must, you must engage. engage. But you know, uh, how's that work? They need to see a benefit before they're going to engage. We have, I figured it out before I came, we have over 10% of our customer base on the customer portal already. And we've only been up and running really well for about two years. And we have our large property managers, we have our school system, we have just people who are like gone so they know if something happens, they can see that. So they'll get an alert or they'll, they, I run a leak report or constant flow, I like to call it, not a leak, everybody panics, but I do a constant flow report every Monday. And if we see people that have huge uses, we call them. So, and if we 
just, you know, it's just maybe a toilet's running or something small, we'll send them a letter and then we send along the instructions on getting on their own customer portal and nine out of ten times the letters, people will call about them. I, I just don't have a lead. And then we do offer to send out our field representatives if they absolutely can't find it and, you know, the field guys know what they're looking for. They know that, yes, Mr. Drive-In owner, you do have an ice machine that runs all the time and let's pull it out. And, oh, yeah, look, six and a half gallons of water every minute. So this is, again, one of those uh, things when we were talking is it's almost a flip in psychology. You're actually trying to help the customer yep. use less. And, uh, and, and we're not just sending them a bill. We're not just saying we're the city, you owe us money, we're going to send you a bill. We're trying to get an interaction with our customer base because we, though they're, you know, they're the residents, they're also our customers, but our employees are also our customers too. So with our distribution system, with our water plant, our wastewater plant, we try to work with all of them to show them in analytics that you can get on there, look at it too, see what Mr. Problem customer is using and then explain to them. You have a more informed answer. And using that fact that you've got a more informed answer, one of the other things we were talking about is you've got a rate change coming yep. up. We're in I'm not going to say the word rise because I'm not sure, sure where, where it is, but you're, <laughs> you're going from three brand bands to five bands or, or something like that. What, what's been the role of analytics within that process as well? It has been huge. So we have, we're in the midst of a rate study at the end of November, we're going to be taking it to commission. So we're not, it's not voted on yet. But the recommendations are we're going to split our customer base into single family, multifamily, and commercial, which we've never had before. We had residential, we had commercial, that was it. Through analytics, and they processed over 7 million points to come up with this information, they found that single family homes irrigate a lot in the summer. So they have that peaking factor from the AMI data. And with the duplex, with Multifamily, and we're going to start with duplexes on the multifamily because even just a two unit uses way less water in their irrigation. So they're going to have the single family home has a five tier rate. That's what they're suggesting. And when they get up into the irrigation rates, it's going to cost them money to be throwing that out on, the, on their lawn. With the multifamily, we're going to have one static rate because they're the AMI data shows that it's just a constant usage. It spikes a little bit, but not much. And same with the commercial. And that's the kind of user you want on your system. The distribution system, the water plant, you don't have to build that huge capacity. You don't have to have all that, you know, four pumps instead of two, three pumps or two pumps if you have a steady, constant usage. But if you have the spikes, that's that peak hour and peak demand is when we, what we have to build our system for. And, I mean, this is something that is, happens the world over. When you, when you talk about... Um, changing the way people pay for utility services. Mm -hmm. It becomes political, emotive, subjective sometimes as well. Um, in your view, how has all of this analytics, and you were talking to me a little bit when we were off air, that you know, just by people seeing the graphs, it debunks subjective thought mm -hmm. processes. How has that helped in giving those actors who are, who are more politically concerned the ammunition to be able to go, yeah, we're going to get behind this. They can see the, the facts. We will take a study of, you know, four or five neighbors. In fact, we're using our uh, operation, utility operations director as part of the comparison with, between her and her neighbors, how much water she puts on her lawn compared to her neighbors, and their lawns look just the same and how we can see that with analytics that, because they say, well, the sprinklers run, how do you know how long they run? Well, in analytics, you can see that, oh, got them running from four to seven, right here, three hours, 1,000 gallons an hour, and our directors only runs when it's not raining, and she uses maybe 500 gallons a month on her grass, and it's just, it just is nice. So her neighbor that uses 3,000 gallons is just throwing away water. And analytics will show us that. And how does all of this then go back into, you know, a, a, a benefit to, to you guys as running the infrastructure and the systems? And, you know, you were talking a little bit about that the analytics also gives you more solid business cases in terms of investing in. Uh, you mentioned a pump that, that, yep. that had been argued for for a long time, and finally you've got the data. Yep. And, and just bring it to life for other utilities about what that does to your operations. 
Well, in speaking about the pump, that was our, our day when our tank just dropped in significantly low. And our distribution superintendent had been bringing to commission that I need this high service pump. We need this high service pump. Well, for two years in a row, they said, you can get it next year. You can get it next year. Well, <laughs> next year never came. So when that tank went low, and that was the tank that needed that high service pump, commission approved it at emergency purchase because they're not cheap. He had it with six weeks. And... Uh Again, I'm just conscious of time here as well, and I, I just really want to bring your, your whole story to life. You also mentioned that you've got a bit of a unique situation in the city of Bismarck where you actually share networks and you share resources. And that is something that everybody's been talking about mm -hmm. because it compounds the cost if everybody's building out the same network, yet there's so much hesitancy to actually jump in and do yes. that. Can you just tell us a little bit about your journey and, and, and any advice you give to anybody who's watching this who's thinking about it. We have a private public partnership with our uh, gas and electric provider, Montana Dakota Utilities in the U, and they share, we share their fixed network and they can put their repeaters and collectors on our infrastructure. On, to me, it's just a win-win because on my side, I'm not hiring any IT people. I don't have anybody that has to go and figure out why this collector's not working. I don't have to order any collectors or repeaters or have hire somebody to go up on the towers and, and install them when this morning where we had a little problem with our analytics coming in and I just sent an email and said, I don't have any readings. Why is that? You know, and my cohort at MDU, she checks on it right away because she has a million meters she watches. We have 22,000 and the, it's, to me, it's just a win-win. For MDU, it has been a win. For an example, they moved one of their collectors. They had a substation down here, and we had a water reservoir higher. The substation down here, they collected 17,000 reeds, and when they move that collector up onto the reservoir, they can collect 99,000 now. I mean, just, just that height difference. And they have, their hardware purchases have cut in half. So that, to them, a big win, just to get that elevation, because we run a gravity fed system, we have the highest points in the city. So just with that elevation and, and other yep. things, they've managed to cut that. So, you know, as we're coming to the end of our time here, we, we, we are here at ITRON Utility yes. Week. Um, what has happened with, sort of with ITRON, and how, how has their technology helped you guys as well in terms of the analytics because there's a huge shift within ITRON mm -hmm. as a business to become more a services business, more of a software business and so on. Have you, have you yes. seen the, the real manifestation of that for yourselves? I have because in, within the city we didn't have a customer service division until we started the meter project and so we're five years into it now and we are trying to develop more contact with our customers not only to have people call in to the front office and when they do call the front office my front office staff does a wonderful job helping them with analytics setting up their customer portal explaining things but right away they go to the meters not working well yes we can come out and check your meter and then i have field our field reps that have ipads and they go out look at the meter show them how it works they bring up their analytics on the ipad they can see what we're looking at why we're explaining it the way we're explaining it, what we see in the trend, what we see in their usage, and we can say, oh, you know, here, you must add company because you use so much more. Well, how'd you know that? Well, you use so much more water, you know. It's amazing when you work, the more you work with it, the more you understand how people use things. And while even if we see a constant flow and we bill in 100 cubic feet, but our meters read in one cubic foot, so seven and a half gallons every hour that meter turns. Probably not a huge leak, could be just that, you know, once in a while the toilet's flushing because the flapper's not sealing. So it's not a constant flow, so they don't hear it. But we can show them that, yep, your meter's turning every hour and it really, it's very helpful for us. So just that resolution and that granularity is making a huge difference. It is, yeah. it is. Bernadette, thank you very much for your time. It's, a, it's okay. amazing how quickly it goes. I feel like we could go on and on, uh, but we, you have other things to do, and uh, I've got other people to interview. But it's been a pleasure talking to you, and uh, thank you as well for watching this interview at the Knowledge Center at ITRON Utility Week.